hey everyone welcome back to my cooking channel today listen today we have an amazing mexican traditional dish called birria and i'm going to be showing you all of these different ways that you can serve it and enjoy it with your family it is out of this world so stick around and i will jump right in we're going to go ahead and start with a nice hefty size pot not too big not too small but it's birria so you're gonna make a decent amount make sure you have room for it in your pot so here i have it filled about halfway with water and here i have one large beef bone i went ahead and asked my uh, butcher to cut it up in three pieces for me just for easier cooking so i don't have to put a big piece of bone in there once my water is looking like it's starting to heat up, I am going to add my beef bone directly to the water with nothing else. To that, I'm gonna be adding some beef neck bones. I am not trimming any of this fat that you see here. It has a really big piece of bone, but it also has some really tender beef in there that's gonna be delicious with your birria. So we're adding those directly in with the beef bones. I'm going to go ahead and let this cook on about medium high heat for a good five to ten minutes to come to a roaring boil. In the meantime, I'm going to dice up my chuck roast in about five pieces. I want about palm size pieces. That way it cooks quicker and it's much more tender. After this has been boiling for a good 5-10 minutes, I am going to remove all of the impurities that rise up to the top before I add anything else. So I just have the beef bones and the beef neck bones. Once they come to a boil, you'll be able to see all of this skim on the top. Make sure to remove most of it. Now that I've removed all of that, I'm going to add five garlic cloves and I've just kind of smashed them so that they can release the flavor quicker. And I'm going to add a whole white onion. Now it's time to add our beef chuck roast in here. Now we're going to go ahead and start the seasoning process here because you want to elevate the seasonings and gradually start adding levels of depth and flavor so we don't want this to start cooking with absolutely nothing in there i'm adding two heaping tablespoons of chicken bouillon and i'm also adding two tablespoons of salt that way as this starts to cook and boil you are already getting a level of seasoning and flavor inside of the meat stir that really really well make sure it is nice and dissolved and then we're going to let this sit for a good hour we're going to just let it cook in these basic seasonings until the meat starts to get a bit tender so cover it up leave it alone for about an hour i did turn the heat down to about a medium now we are going to start on the magic all of the dried chili peppers that we are going to need to make this dish what it is i am using chile guajillo i am using chile ancho and i'm also using chile pasilla so here is my guajillo some of them are huge and some of them are tiny so two to three ounces will do the trick i ended up using 13 but between small ones and big ones i have three chile anchos and three chile pasilla Next, I'm going to remove all of the stems and devein and remove all of the seeds as well so that I can wash them and clean them properly. Here, there is nothing in them. I have scrubbed them and washed them really, really well. They do come dirty sometimes, so make sure you clean them properly. Once they are nice and clean, I'm going to dab each and every one of them on a paper towel. Yes, time consuming, but do you want clean chiles for your sauce or do you want dirty chiles? Raise your hands, clean chiles. Thank you very much. Totally worth it. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to get the actual sauce going. I have three pretty large Roma tomatoes. I have four to five garlic cloves. And on this um, comal here on the side, I have it on medium heat. And I'm going to go ahead and be toasting these. So 
every single chili pepper we are toasting we want to make sure that they don't burn so make sure that you're kind of pressing them on one side and then flip them over and give them a nice press on the other side they're going to start darkening up you can see that some of them will start looking a little black on that means that they're toasting really really nicely don't let them get too too dark because then that means they're burnt and then that's the type of flavor that you are going to add to your meat and that is not the flavor that we are looking for. So I have both of these going at the same time. In the back, you can see the, the tomato and the garlic is already you know, cooking or uh, about to come to a boil. And then I'm toasting these in the front. So we're multitasking here because hello, that is what we do. <laughs> this dish already takes all day. We don't want it to take any longer. So once these are nice and toasted, um, go ahead and add them to the water boiling in the back. Now, once they're toasted, what we want to do is um, achieve that flavor of smokiness um, to each pepper and each pepper just, it, it tastes so much different once you toast them. So that we're achieving that flavor by toasting them here, a nice smoky, rich uh, chili flavor. And then we're adding them to the hot water so that they can rehydrate and they are more um, blendable, obviously. And I'm just doing this in, in steps, you know, however many I can fit. And we're toasting and we're adding to the back. And we've got a nice little assembly line going. So <laughs> I don't know why I recorded this clip and it was so long. Sorry, guys. But obviously, it, it was it's important that you see how we're toasting, how we're toasting this. So let me jump ahead just a tiny bit as you're toasting and then adding to the boiling water in the back. I have already turned the heat source in the back burner um, because it's nice and hot. So we don't need it to come to a boil. It's hot enough to rehydrate all of our chili peppers. Now, once I toast all of my chili peppers, right? The guajillo, the chile ancho, and the pasilla, the next thing that we are going to start toasting is going to be some of our dry seasonings. I'm going to do the clove, the pepper, um, the bay leaves, and the cinnamon stick. This is going to be super duper quick. You're going to throw them on there, roll them around for all of five seconds, and then flip them, flip them, and then add them directly to the water so those can soften up enough to blend as well. Kind of cool, huh? So I'm going to let this sit here for about five minutes. Okay, so this has been sitting here for about five minutes. Everything is nice and soft and pliable and ready to be blended. I am adding everything directly into my blender. Do not forget, um, use a spoon to scoop up the... Um, cloves and the whole pepper because using this little tool that I'm using here is only going to pick up the large pieces. You don't want to forget about those dry seasonings, those whole dry seasonings we added at the end. So I could see the cinnamon stick did come along, but the pepper and the clove um, kind of stayed at the bottom of this little juice here. So be sure to use a spoon, spoon those out, and then add them directly to your blender as well. I didn't record that clip, guys. I went in there and then I said, oh, wait, there's the garlic or the pepper and stuff. I have more seasonings. Yes, flavor upon flavor. I've got oregano, cumin, onion, paprika, salt, chicken bouillon. Amounts will be in the description bar below. You know I don't ever leave you hanging. So be sure to check that out for exact amount. We're adding that in there. And then we are going to add vinegar. I have apple cider vinegar. Sounds a little off, but let me tell you, it goes well together. And then just a splash of the same water that I boiled everything in, only enough to get the blade moving and to get the salsa kind of going and incorporated. I just didn't want it to be like super duper thick where it wasn't moving and you can see it's kind of there but then you can also see that it does come to grip with some of those tomatoes and then starts blending really nicely so I want to blend this for a good minute to two minutes you want it to be as smooth and as blended as possible 
very very smooth so now just to add a little uh, flavor and just to get it moving a little bit more I'm gonna add the same broth that I'm cooking the meat in because this is already somewhat seasoned and it already has that beef flavor so why not right it's better than just using water all right so once we have our sauce nice and well blended we are going to strain it into our birria this is going to take not that long i add some of the broth and it just helps me move everything through the strainer a lot quicker and move 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 stir 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 add a little more broth until you are done straining all of the salsa in now we are going to let this cook for about another two hours so this has already been cooking for about two hours in the sauce one hour without the sauce so a total of three hours once you are nice and cooked you're going to remove like you can see I'm doing here, all of the excess fat and grease that the meat has released naturally. We are going to put that to use later. So remove as much as possible. Take a look at this broth though. Like look at the consistency of the broth. It almost doesn't even look um, watery. It kind of looks like it's, it has a bit of texture and consistency, which is just so delicious. Look at this meat. This is how you're going to check to see if your birria is done. Can you pull apart your meat with just a fork and not a lot of struggle? You can even rip a little piece off and taste it. If it's a little chewy and just too um, tough, leave it in for another 30 minutes and work your way up from there until you realize that everything is nice and tender. Look at this beef bone. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Leave me a comment below and let me know if you guys actually eat the bone marrow. This part here, do you guys eat that? Do you throw it away? What do you do? Yes, I just put that piece in my mouth. Delicious. Amazing. So we are looking really, really good here. About three hours, three hours and 15 minutes in, everything is nice and tender. And I'm just showing you clips of this so that you know what to look for in your meat. Like this uh, beef neck bone, the meat is pretty much falling apart. It was really hot, guys. I was trying not to burn my face with the steam and show you at the same time so it looks like I'm struggling but I'm really not but this broth oh my god <laughs> you want to talk about flavor look at beautiful so good so so good <laughs> so next thing I wanted to show you guys because a lot of you um, were trying to guess what I was making when I posted a picture of beef bones on my snapchat And this is what I do to my beef bone I take the marrow out and then I remove all of the nice like tender meat around it And then I add it to my meat and pretty much discard the bone or just throw the bone back in the broth But I do do that to all of the beef bones I remove all of the meat and reserve it to serve it uh, And I chop it up and mix it up with the rest of the meat so my birria is still on the stove on low because listen, if it cooks another extra 15 minutes, it is not going to hurt. So in the meantime, I'm going to get my toppings ready for all of the amazing, delicious dishes. I'm about to show you that you can make with this one meat, birria. I know you're wondering why is this video over 20 minutes long? Well, hello, I'm letting you know everything you can make, not just one dish, you can make four dishes well you can make more than that but i'm going to show you four ways <laughs> um, that we eat birria when i make birria so white onion cilantro lime boom don't forget your salsa which is the video previous to this one so check that salsa up too i'll go ahead and link it in the description bar below so you guys can make the salsa that goes with this dish as well so i've got the chuck roast this small piece i'm adding now is some of the um the neck bone meat super tender so i like to cut both of those and do a mixture and then i also add some of the bone marrow in the there as well at the end just to kind of have a little bit of different texture that is what this is all about different flavors depth of flavors textures in the meat just an amazing dish and look 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 at this watch that's my husband Mm -hmm. because he had been smelling it all afternoon and he was like oh my god when can I taste it is it ready yet so as soon as he saw me pull out a piece of meat he 
he was like can i taste it <laughs> so of course this is for us for the family so yes he can put his little fingers all up in the food and taste it so once i get it to a nice chopped up consistency i like to add a little bit of the broth just to get all the flavor of the because that's where it's at guys the broth is where all of the flavor is so i like to add that in there mix it up and let's get ready to start assembling some dishes number one this is the typical classic way to eat birria like a soup so you're going to add your chopped up beef in there three different types right some marrow some neck bone some uh, chuck and then add plenty of the broth you hear me plenty of the broth and go ahead and top it with your cilantro with your onion squeeze some fresh lime juice in there and add a nice hefty spoonful of this delicious salsa specifically for birria yes i have the recipe on the channel for you already do not panic i got you covered and then you take a spoon listen and you go to town you hear me you take a spoon and you just slurp this up like a soup and it is amazing trust me so there you go dish number one easy peasy complete and i hope you guys try it this way this is classic traditional can't go wrong yum you can also serve it with rice and beans but listen does nobody has that type of time when you're making birria all day long okay <laughs> next i'm moving along to super easy this is going to be your birria taco okay so you just add a little bit of the um grease that we reserved in, in the beginning remember you add a little bit of that and then you add your beef you add a little bit of broth and now you're just waiting for your tortilla to get nice and crispy i like to add a little bit more of the the little extra grease a little bit of the extra fat that kind of helps it get a little bit toasted uh, a bit quicker so you can see i'll add a little bit more of that now and you just kind of want it to be crunchy right so that you don't have a soggy taco so you flip it you can start seeing that it's turning brown on one side add a little bit of more of that uh, a little bit of that grease and then flip it a couple more times till it's nice and crispy now you're going to open it up add your toppings remember don't skip any of the toppings on any of these dishes i'm showing you onion cilantro we're going to pull this out to the side and then i'm going to make some consomme this is where you fix up the broth so that you can dip stuff in it yes so good <laughs> so i grab just a cup and then i fill it up about three quarters of the way i'm going to add this to my taco and then i'm going to go ahead and add the same toppings to the consomme because this is how you eat it here you dip your taco and you dip it in the consomme you take a bite of your taco and then you take a nice big gulp of your broth of your consomme and it is delicious flavor upon flavor so this is another way that you can eat your birria, birria taco and consomme. Yum. Dip it all up in there, get all the flavor, get all the juices. And I got half of the onions on my hand, so let's clean that up. But let's come back and take a bite because it's so good. <laughs> all right, that's the second way to eat this. Third way, we are making quesa birrias which is pretty much quesadillas with birria right <laughs> so i am using that reserved little extra grease right that we reserved in the beginning we are putting it to use that is how and why most um, tacos or quesadillas have this beautiful flavor and color on the tortilla because you're using the ingredients that most people would dump and discard no sir no ma'am we do not put anything to waste <laughs> we reserve it so that we can fry up the tortillas at the end right so this one i am doing a double tortilla you can do a double tortilla with a taco as well um personal preference i really like to do a double tortilla when i do the quesabirias because there is more filling on the inside of these right you're adding a whole bunch of cheese so you don't want it to fall apart so i always make sure i do double on this one so traditionally you would use queso 
Oaxaca. Ooh, get it for the gram, girl. Get them snapshots. <laughs> uh, queso Oaxaca. It's super melty. It's delicious. It's pretty much what goes with this dish. Queso Oaxaca is very difficult to get your hands on. So if you cannot get it, queso, which is cheese, for quesadilla, which is just a super melty type of cheese, that cheese will work as well. And you add your meat, you add a little bit of broth, and then you start flipping so you can get that nice little crisp on this um, quesabirria as well. So good. A little bit more of the oil flavor there. Just so we can get it nice. Oh, oh, yes, girl, get a picture for Snapchat. Let them know you are in the kitchen today whooping it up. <laughs> a little behind the scenes for you guys, you know. Okay, so you're just cooking this down until you get it nice and crispy on both sides. Now, keep in mind, I would usually be making more than one at a time. Um, but I'm doing one at a time just for you guys, just to show you, just for the purposes of not crowding up the screen. And you guys can really see what I'm doing with each individual dish. But of course, if you're feeding your family, you can be making three, four, five of these at the same time. Look at that beautiful crust on the cheese and on the tortilla. OMG, so good. Now, keep in mind, you can also make the consomme, the little broth in the cup. You can make it and dip your quesabirrias in there too. It's not just for the tacos. It's for whatever you want to dip in there. I'm going to go ahead and open it up, and you know what it is. Cilantro, cebolla, and some of this bomb.com salsa. I hope you guys make the salsa because this dish, it just, it has to go together. <laughs> make the salsa the day before, make the birria the next day. And you are ready. Look at this. Delicious. Grab it, dip it in the consomme, and you are golden. Last but not least, our fourth option with birria is going to be birria ramen. Yes. It's a thing, trust me. <laughs> so I am adding some of my diced up meat on the top. You know the drill, cilantro and onion. <laughs> and then I'm gonna fill this cup up almost all the way um, with the consomme, with the broth that I cooked the meat in. That is where all the flavor is. <clears throat> And I'm going to be very honest with you guys because that's how we roll on this channel, right? If I were to do the birria ramen differently next time, I would use a ramen that does not have the seasoning included in it already. The only reason I say that is because when I made this one here, uh, the ramen itself already had that beef flavor already in it. So it was just a smidgen too salty. Just a little bit, not enough for me not to eat it because I ate it, but just keep that in mind. Cover it up with a plate. And I would say maybe five minutes, give or take five to 10 minutes so that your ramen can get nice and cooked. Then you can remove the plate and start mixing everything in so you can enjoy, of course, add the salsa and the lime right before you eat it and dig in wow delicious or what it was so good besides it being a bit salty because of the seasoning that was already in the ramen it was still delicious it was still amazing so i hope that you truly loved this recipe because let me tell you it, it took a lot of work to make but i love to share these with you so leave me a comment below and i hope you enjoyed i will talk to you next time bye